Okay, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon to all of you. Well, boys and girls, guests, it is probably the right time we should prepare ourselves. And we must prepare ourselves. Well, a question might come why should we prepare ourselves? It is a new world. A world where if we ask anybody and everybody, what is the largest taxi company of the world? Everybody would probably reply, it is Uber. If we ask about which hotel contains the maximum number of rooms, probably we'll talk about Airbnb. But ladies and gentlemen, how funny is it? They really don't have a single room or a single taxi in their own inventory. That is the world we are standing right today. The same world has got challenges too. What are those? Every moment, every day, every year, the temperature is rising. The global warming is taking place. The way we are enjoying ourselves, and the same way we are abusing the nature, the environment, and the nature is becoming very negative to us. But it's a big challenge for us. Based on this fact, I have chosen my subject to talk about these challenges and expectation in academia and in business industry. Ladies and gentlemen, well, in order to talk by subject, I would like to get the topics into four segments. First is challenge, then expectation, then academy, and then business industry. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in the sequence, challenges come first, but then I would like to speak about the expectation first. Why? Because people expect, society expects, and in order to achieve the expectation or reach to the goal of the expectation, we got to really face the real challenges. So to talk about the expectation, I believe we all understand that there is a, a specific definition about expectation in the academic language. But expectation at all time varies between person to person, individual to individual, society to society, class to class. Just to give an example, here the audience is mostly people from the academy, either teachers or students. If any of the teacher asks the student, what is the result of 5 plus 5, I'm sure the student would say 10. And once the student says 10, rest of the people, the teachers, they become happy because that is what he has taught them and that is what he expects to listen from them and he gives him 100 out of 100. But ladies and gentlemen, this is one type of expectation from the one group of people. As a business entrepreneur or as a business person, if you are in the process of recruiting your mid-level management or high-level management, if you ask the candidate, what is the result of 5 plus 5? Certainly, if the answer is 10, probably as an entrepreneur, we won't be very happy to recruit. We'll probably look up expect a different source of answer. If you really answer that, 5 plus 5 is supposed to be 10. But what you are looking out from me? Do you want me to make it 70? Do you want me to make it 20? Do you want a result of 25? That is my challenge as a manager to produce for you. That is the business committee's expectation. Ladies and gentlemen, there is the biggest conflict between the challenges of industry, business industry, and the academy. But the fear that we are facing for the coming days in the world on different natural and the human civilization, the structure, it is time that academy and the business industry, they should work together with shaking hands side by side. This is very easy to talk, but this is indeed very difficult to achieve. Because if we are to list the challenges between the academic body and the business industry, we could probably list many numbers by yourself, by myself, or by anybody else. But if we really examine in a very, very methodical way, the challenge is one. And that one single challenge is, is the mindset. Is the mindset. Because these two bodies have their own mindset, where the biggest problem is the ego, which drives you to conflict and complex. 
if we can really convert this conflict and conflict into cooperation and collaboration between the academia and the business industry, I think that would be the best goal. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, from the mindset, I would like to talk a little bit about the challenge in theory, and then I will get into how these challenges can be mitigated in reality. Well, I come from a very valued family of Bangladesh. In our family, we used to mostly practice at least one meal together, either lunch or dinner, along with our parents and our brother and sister. Ladies and gentlemen, from the childhood, I found my father every day in the dining table is to say about some valued words which mostly we practice in the academic area. One of the, his sermon was like that, never try to be a married man, try to be a great man. That is how we grew up. I really did not understand what is the meaning and value of these two words, money man and great man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, once I graduated from the course at the age of 20, then I thought it's right time for me to ask my father, what is the meaning between these two? So I asked my father, what is the difference between money man and great man? He just said, in order to be a money man, you just need to have a lot of money. That's it. Sufficient money to live your life. I said, then what is a great man? He just told us, great man, in order to be, you definitely need to be a money man. You must have money sufficiently to live in this society with dignity and honor. And then you need to be a man of character. I said, what do you mean by man of character? He said, never become a man of reputation. I asked him, what is the meaning of man of reputation? He just said, man of reputation means he who thinks. What people are thinking about him? He said, give a damn to that. Think about what you are, that's your character. And then I asked, what is the next? He said, whatever you do, what profession you are, what place you are being placed, use your best of the education to make a next level value addition, and that's for knowledge. So you should be a person of knowledge wherever you are. If you have money, if you have character, if you have knowledge, then you are a great man. But ladies and gentlemen, standing here today, I can very well tell this balance are not there in this society. The people are producing future leaders, the people are culturing with the education which give the best of the society and the industry. Are they really valued? The academic people are valued with the proper financial backup or not? Time for us to be hot and we should focus on that. I believe they are not. So what should we do? We should find out a operandi by which the, our academic people, our intellectual bodies, our teachers, the manufacturer of our future Bangladesh, they should be well valued by the monetary sector as well. In order to do that, we should focus the right area where we should develop at least 25% of our academia. If I may tell you, the worst scenario of our country, the biggest strength of our country is the blue economy, the way of Bengal. But probably in 2010 or 15, we got a maritime university. Before that, we never really know about it. The people around us, different country people, they have been perhaps enjoying our resources. We have a great resource under our water, which is called about gas and the mineral resources. Fortunately or unfortunately, end of 70s, probably the Russian University opened up a subject called geology and mining. Before that, until that, perhaps none of we know about it much, but it confused probably a stronger portion of our economy. If we talk about our forest, our golden fiber of Bangladesh, too. If we talk about our sheep oil, if we talk about our tea, how many universities are really teaching on that subject? How many universities really do have that subject? I believe it is a great question for us to be asked. If we really focus 25% on our passive research, and then what we can do, the business industry can grow from there. And R&D by the intellectual body of the university, they can be involved. And once they really come up with the right solution and the right R&D, then business community and academicians 
they can join the group for a pattern. And once they go for a global pattern, through the patterning, the monetary crisis for the academy can be resolved probably in the best of the best way. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the areas that I am telling about the challenges. How can we really solve these challenges? Now, if we talk about success through this, then we have to understand one thing. Many academicians, they have by now given a lot of definition about success, but in one sentence, we, we want to draw down the definition of success. I would just say, this is art of compromise. So we have to have the mentality of compromising between the two parties. And very often we think success is a destination. But it is never. It is just a journey. So a journey in which we must never think that we have finished it. If we think that we have finished it, then I must tell you, we should be finished at that point of time. So success is a journey, not a destination. So it must have a continuation. <coughs> a lot of alternate thinking can be uh, caught in the discussion, but truly, these are the very simple things by which if we can solve the financial mobility in the academic area with right perspective of the research and development, then business and academy will work definitely hand to hand and the money, the character and the knowledge would definitely stand still and we will certainly then feel proud about them and we will be able to face the challenges of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I have never been in the university. I just graduated from the Air Force Academy. So very difficult to speak in front of all of you, very learned person. However, once my friend asked me to be a keynote speaker, I thought it is very difficult. And I still think that, so I just spoke. If you want, you can take some notes, and the key is in your hand. If you can open the lock, the world is yours. And only then we can say, like our great poet, Rabindranath Tagore, Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Very impressive uh, presentation, Mr. Abdul Wakim. Uh, probably uh, some questions or uh, questions or comments from the floor. If you have, please raise your hand and grab your opportunity. If no. Yes, go ahead. Thank you, it was a wonderful presentation. Welcome, so, uh, I just like to ask you one important thing. You, you, may have sh you, you may have been thinking about that to mitigate these challenges and the expectation in the academy and industry, what mm -hmm. are your thoughts to involve the students? Because it is a huge human resource. You know, it's a skilled person. We really need skilled person. So what is your thought about involving students to mitigate these challenges and expectations? Thank you very much, Mina. Well, my answer will be a little frustrating. But I say in my full lecture, perhaps you came a little late. Or biggest problem is the mindset. We always think complex and competition. We never think collaboration and cooperation. Very unfortunately, I would like to give you a statistics. We are based on garments industry and the foreign remittance. In our industries, more than 70% top level managements are from other countries. But believe it or not, our boys and girls are probably 10 times far better, brilliant and with top IQs than those people. Only thing that we don't make them interacted in the right time from education to the business industry. We don't really make much of the interaction. That's why I say, in order to create the interaction, we must really understand the investment in the game because this is the best raw material for a nation. You are producing the future Bangladesh. Okay? If we talk about the history and the story, we have Rabindrana. We have uh, Nuzru, we have Omar Toshe, we have Bangalore Mujibur Rahman. 
Okay, so this is Bangladesh. So in this Bangladesh, we are hiring the top level and mid level management from outside. It's really very frustrating. 2013, sorry, 1913, Rabindranath was the first Nobel recipient in whole of Asia, in whole of Asia, from the you know, you know that. So we have to make interactive. For that, we have to really focus on money. Money is very important. So in order to focus on money, we have to go huge R&D with the academy and the business standing. And once we do the R&D, then we have to have a very bilateral, respectful, reciprocal agreement by which patron can be protected for each party's monetary benefit. Then the engagement will be respectful and reciprocal, and thereby it is possible. It's time, I think, you should, with free mind, build, put your students in the business community and keep some portion of their assessment through the real-time engagement with the business university. Well, I was a boy back in 1980. I went with the, to Japan and I found in those days, the school students, they go to the factory and they work. And that's an assessment, there is an assessment there. Not necessarily, but we have to really focus on science and technology because actually they are the path finder. Whatever the change is going to be taking now is science and technology. So we must go for R&D and we must protect our pattern. Not that our young boys and girls <coughs> makes an R&D and is being hijacked by the businessman and the, it is sold in the highest price and you or she loses the influence. So we have to engage purposefully. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, actually, I made some introductions about him. He is the uh, founder of the Gram. The Gram stands for uh, Global a uh, uh, global resource augmentation management. So uh, probably he wants to deliver his own viewpoint on how to make a, a certain strategic uh, approach to make a collaboration between the academic side and business sector. So I think uh, as we are going to be growing older, then we can understand what is the important driving force for the uh, society, societal uh, development. So in that sense, he is emphasizing uh, the monetary side is so important to uh, negotiate or bridge the gap between those sectors. So I think I uh, fully understand I have a good concept with this point. And also I missed one uh, uh, things about his long life story uh, in the introduction, but you, you better refer to that uh, final point on his page. Thank you. And somebody else who has, yes, please. Here's his final one. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I have been in several panel discussions and uh, there are quite a few other events where we always talk about a lack of communication between uh, academia and business industry. And uh, this topic that you mentioned and discussed is something I've listened to quite a few times in the past. Uh, so my request to you, since you have such a large experience in this field, um, can you propose certain concrete steps. We talk about generalized challenges and expectations, I, uh, but we, I, I don't see concrete steps being proposed okay. in anywhere. Yes, but in the context, the context of Bangladesh, given the current state of our industry uh, and academia. Uh, still, there is a missing uh, policy level decision how to make compulsory. Uh, there is a very uh, a case uh, opportunity for the uh, industrialist come to the academia, there is a missing in the policy that in the government, in Bangladesh. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a wonderful question. I just, I try to touch on a little bit. You see, engagement has to come need basis. And as you know, the business school people very often they say about Swaran I try to touch upon Bangladesh strength. Our strength is our way of the law. Our strength is our golden fiber of Bangladesh, our strength is our forest, our strength is our team. But see, we are selling our mothers and sisters labor by six dollars per day. Why we don't make robot? Or why we don't shoulder the pieces gold by them? Why don't we use them for the same? This is not a rocket science. Any of the young boys and girls can be their supervisor in their office for a time and they can really create it, it is possible. And then we can jump to our economy to in a different magnitude and level. 
You know, in Ship Valley, this part of the world, people used to come from the West to build ship here. We had been very famous of ship building. We are not building ship, we are stitching pops. People are stairs. We, we, our teams, people are importing from Bangladesh, giving a branding and leveling, and selling it to Harris. Buying 100 tack a kilo, selling with $2,000 a kilo. But we have very top level Institute of Business Administration, IPA in Dhaka University. They are brand. Why we are not using their intellectual enrichment to this sector by our business entrepreneur to make our team a brand team that helps. Our youth, people are buying by bulk, our farmers are dying. Why we are not? How many industries are teaching on this geotechnology? How many universities are teaching about the uh, maritime patrol? What about the resources we have under the maritime, under our blue economy? If we can tap 5% of that, today we should be the richest country for Asia. So I think very specific, 25% of our academic department in the university must and must focus on this sort of education. If that comes, really, business industry will be more interested of doing some development. You think about Singapore, it's nothing. Just a pole, based on a pole. They are the largest container program in the world and discharging the highest number of uh, containers are in the highest economy. You think about Holland, reclaiming their lands and becoming the greatest economy. So, you are not getting a chance for, to give this sort of education to our young boys and girls. We have to create industry on our strain basis, academic department on our strain basis, and then Rest of the education also should continue, but it should have an interconnectivity. And business, what I say, the biggest problem is one, is the mindset. With the business industry and the academic here, we have a mindset problem of complex and conflict, believe me. Because, that I say very clearly, if you have money, because money is required in life, character is required, knowledge is required. But we think for a businessman, it is only money, for uh, academician, it's only knowledge. I didn't want to say one thing. If you allow me, very politely I say, the business which makes money and profit only is the poorest business. The academy which provides certificate and degree is the poorest education and poorest academy. That's what I pray. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much. It's a really exciting